Each one of these tablets has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables, except you didn't have to clean them, you didn't have to cook them, you didn't have to drag them home to the grocery store, and if you don't like the taste, you can swallow them. But I like the taste. So while I'm talking to you right now, I just had a plate of vegetables. It gives me 60% protein, 40 vitamins and minerals, then it was the, this is the spiritual part. Spirulina is called the cyanobacteria. It was the first life on earth. Hi everybody, welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all over the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We have such a treat for you this week. We've got Catherine Arnston with us. Hi, Catherine, welcome. Hey, Julie and everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Delighted to have you. You guys are going to love her. She founded a company that's helping revolutionize health around the world. And I, I think you're on a mission from God I to do this. I am definitely so I wanna... on a mission from God. There is no question yeah. there. I'll, I'll tell you all about it later. <laughs> yeah, well, I got a bunch of questions for you about it. But when I think of you, I think of you as the algae angel. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I've been trying to think... And- Algae princess, algae queen, and nothing oh. else. But algae angel, I'm going to take algae that. Algae angel. I think you need to trademark that. The algae angel, yes, because yeah. angels are there to help and guide you and bring you truth and serenity and peace. And and, uh, and algae does all of that. And I would love to be considered the person that you know helps people understand that. So I think that's it. I've been looking for a moniker for years. <laughs> There you go. I, I must be it. psychic or something. Thank you. There you go. Oh, algae yeah. Angel. Yeah. So, algae Angel. When I when I was preparing for our chat today, that name came to me. And and obviously it's the first thing I'm asking you. And so I when that happens like that, Catherine, I take note of that. And I like you, I'm an entrepreneur and got lots of trademarks and patents and stuff like that. And so I just thought, eh, if she doesn't have that trademark, you need to trademark that. Yeah. I think I'll, uh, so. uh, I have a couple more things I'm going to be copywriting. So I, I'll throw that into the mix. There you go. Thank there you. you. Go. What, why are you being led to educate the world about algae. Like I, I mentioned a minute ago, I, I feel like you're on a mission from God about this. And I'm serious when I say that, this feels like it's something that's a spiritual thing and you're being led to do this. So tell us, yes. how did this start? Tell us what the backstory is and and why are you being led to do this? Yes, well, I questioned this myself for the first literally five years, but uh, I finally endorsed it or embraced it rather. So um, I'm actually Canadian. I've lived in Boston for over 30 years, but I mentioned the Canada part because my family's all still in Canada. And this journey that has led me to algae and my algae angel mission um, happened because 15 years ago, my younger sister, who I'm very close to in Canada, developed breast cancer. Um, now, first of all, I want everyone to know she completely healed and we celebrate her being cancer free every year. But 15 years ago, uh, well, anytime you get a cancer diagnosis, it, your whole world turns upside down. But fortunately, her oncologist, which uh, was a woman, and women just are a little bit more intuitive and open to nutritional issues. And so when my sister was preparing for her chemotherapy, her oncologist told her, didn't recommend, but told her to change her diet to an alkaline diet because it would be very important for her healing. Now, she didn't tell her exactly what an alkaline diet was or why it would work for her. So the first call my sister made after that appointment was to me. Not that I knew anything about nutrition because I have an MBA. I was doing international uh, internet uh, development, nothing to do anything remotely with nutrition, but I'm a very good researcher and I love my sister. So I said, I have no idea what this means, but I will find out. And I did. It turned out it was mostly a plant-based diet because of the phytonutrients I I found out afterwards and the chlorophyll um, that are alkaline and have been proven to build your immune system. And I can give you more geeky science about how that all works if you want later on. Anyway, so I started researching foods for her, ones not to eat. She did change her diet. She went completely plant-based, did her chemo, and she completely healed. Now, 
in the process of helping her, I started reading about plant-based nutrition. I must have read a hundred and I each uh, articles. I read probably about a dozen books, and this was I mean, fifteen years ago, and nobody was talking about plant-based nutrition 15 years ago. Everybody is now, but 15 years ago, nobody was. And I'm just a very motivated, passionate person. I always have been. And I saw the science about this alkaline plant-based diet stuff. And I thought, boy, somebody should tell the world about this because I'd never heard about it. So I thought, well, I need to figure this out. I don't know how to do it because I don't have any nutrition uh, background. So I, w I was a big fan of Louise Hay, who was alive at the time. And I, I, she was having a, a figure out your life conference, a one day conference in New York. And I thought, I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to go to Louise Hay's conference. And maybe that will help me figure out what I'm supposed to do with all this plant-based knowledge. And the conference hadn't even started. I was standing in the Starbucks line. I was getting a cup of tea. And the person in front of me started talking about this nutrition course she had just graduated from. It took less than a year. She didn't have any science background whatsoever. And she was so excited about it. And I said, well, what was that program? I tapped her on the shoulder. And she says, it was called the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. So I thought, okay, I'm going to, I wrote that down. I went through the Louise Hay co course that day, took the train home. By the time I got home, I had Googled the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, also known as IIN. And the next day I signed up. <laughs> and I, because I thought, if I'm going to do something with this plant-based nutrition thing, I need some kind of certification. I need some kind of knowledge. So I signed up for this course. I graduated in July 2009. And I thought, okay, well, now what? I, I've got this little bit of knowledge. I thought, okay, I will teach plant-based nutrition. Um, so I put my own curriculum together and I taught the importance of plant-based nutrition to people at corporations and hospitals. I didn't charge any money. I just wanted to get the information out. And this is what truly led me to algae because as I was teaching people the science, which I was pretty solid on by then, of the importance of eating more green vegetables, um, I got so much pushback because they said, look it, my mother's been trying to get me to eat vegetables since I was a kid, but they're too much work. They're heavy to carry home from the grocery store. They take a long time to clean, to cook, to eat. I throw half of them out. They, they go bad before I even cook them. My husband won't eat them. My kids won't eat them. Uh, they give me indigestion. So I thought, okay, I've seen the science of the importance of green nutrition, but if I can't get people to eat them, I got to find a way to get the nutrition into them in a way that's effortless and doesn't cost any extra time, doesn't give them indigestion, blah, 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 blah. So I just went back and looked at everything I'd found for my sister and nothing was working until I got to algae. It turns out, first of all, algae is the most alkaline food in the world. So that box was checked. It's also, we have a quote from NASA that says, um, it's the most nutrient dense food in the world. It has one gram of algae has the same nutrition as a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables, one to a thousand never heard of. I mean, that's a crazy number. It's also, it turns out, the most studied food in the world. Yes, algae is food. It is not a supplement. And I can show you some algae, our algae farms. Uh, we grow them in fresh water. Algae is everywhere, by the way. Um, it's in the lakes, the rivers, the streams, but it's also uh, grown and harvested as a food crop, no different than lettuce or tomatoes. That's how we grow ours. So uh, there's 100,000 studies documenting all the health benefits of algae, heart, preventing heart disease, preventing cancer, preventing inflammation, preventing Alzheimer's, preventing indigestion. The list is endless and it's all documented in science. Algae turns out to be a multi-billion dollar agricultural crop in Asia where they take it every single day and have for 60 years, except 99% of it is grown there and 99% of it is consumed there. And yet also, by the way, the Japanese, they have, they're uh, known for their longevity, low obesity rates, low cancer rates, and they take chlorella algae every day. And we're going to talk about the two algae, spirulina and chlorella. So the most, the best part of it all, I waited to the very end, is that algae comes you can you grow, we grow it, and then we dry it uh, without, we dry it without high heat, which preserves all the nutrients. And we'll tell you how, why that's important. And we press them into little tablets about the size of a baby aspirin. Each one of these tablets has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables, except you didn't have to clean them. You didn't have to cook them. You didn't have to drag them home to the grocery store. And if you don't like the taste, you can swallow them. But I like the taste. So while I'm talking to you right now, I just had a plate of vegetables. It gives me 60% protein. 
40 vitamins and minerals, highest chlorophyll in the world. It is not only nutritious, it is like your health insurance, because as I'll go into the detail, it has so many preventative capabilities, it's unbelievable. It's a gift to us from Mother Nature. It's been, it was the, this is the spiritual part. Spirulina is called a cyanobacteria. It was the first life on earth. Okay, right. that's a lot to unpack. So let's let's go back a little bit here. <laughs> okay, first of all, you say you didn't know anything about any of this. Well, you know how to read. And I think that's the key. When we're led to do something, most of us are stymied by fear. And we go, well, I can't do that. I don't have the credentials. I don't blah, 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 blah. I'm a girl with a communications degree who's invented surgical devices sold throughout the world and manufactured them. I'm with you, girl. I understand. It's like, I don't know how to do this stuff, but I know how to hire people who do this stuff. So that's number one. We all can do whatever we're led to do. If you can read, you can learn all of this stuff, right? And that, and you're a great example of that. Talk to us about how this, how we've gotten to this place with our nutrition. I know that cancer cells are immortal. This blows my mind that when they take a cancer cell out of a human or out of a dog or whatever, they can, it'll continue to grow forever in a Petri dish. And we all have cancer cells and we all come in with them, but there's something in the environment that triggers them going into the active mode and then they migrate. Like, you know, you're not going to get a lung cell in your kidney, but you're going to get a lung cancer cell. You can get a lung cancer cell in your kidney. So explain to us What's happening with, we just lost you. There you go. <laughs> okay, you're back. That's all right. So explain explain to us, please, what happens when we have the environment that lets cancer and other degenerative diseases begin, and then what can we do with the algae, with other things, and also explain the difference between alkaline and acidic diets. Is it fruit and veggies, basically, or is it just veggies? Uh, well, um, fruit has sugar in it, so they'll be slightly alkaline. And you can go online and there's charts. You can just download a chart. It will show you, uh, like, for example, lemons are alkaline. Um, uh, what else is alkaline? Almost a uh, vet... Um, um, Berries are the most least acidic. Uh, grapes, um, there's, there's, but you can just alkaline diet. Just go on online and Google uh, alkaline diet chart, and there's hundreds of charts. It's all the same information um, because this information has been around for a while, and you can start to learn how to balance out your your diet with um, you know, with more alkalinity to protect your heart and your health and your cells. But you can't get any more alkaline than algae. So if you don't want to um, give up a lot of things that you're already doing and you want to balance them out, algae is the best way to do that because it is the most alkaline food in the world. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned the Asians have been using algae, I know, for millennia. Do you think that we're coming around full circle where... There are people in this day and age that are kind of going back to the basics and seeing, okay, here are the blue zones, the longevity of different cultures and different parts of the world and what they're eating. And they're starting to say, all right, this works, worked for a really long time. And now we have so much more disease because of the processed food. Are you finding that? To be the um, case? I think that helps a little bit. I, I really think COVID sped everything up because it made people very aware of their health. And, um, and up until then, the medical community had been saying, oh, nutrition doesn't affect your health at all. <laughs> um, and so people became disenchanted and disillusioned with what they were hearing. And so they just started their own journey of learning, which is so empowering. Uh, it can be disconcerting at first because what you're learning 
is 180 degrees from what you had been previously taught. So you go on this, it's a very out of body experience almost. And I had it myself for quite a while because nothing seemed to be true any longer. Everything I believed was seemed to be incorrect. And what's ironic is that we're just getting back to the basics of eating whole foods. That's, that's where the magic happens. Uh, the more whole foods that you eat, particularly if you are able to grow them yourself, uh, if you are able to eat grass-fed uh, animal protein, um, eggs that are, you know, hatched uh, in uh, out outdoor uh, areas, that that's the way life used to be. <laughs> so, uh, and people are seeking more nutritionally oriented interventions because the the other solution are either is either surgery or um, medication. And the average American over 40 now is on five medications. Uh, I'm 67 and I don't have any medications and I have no chronic diseases either. And I eat a lot of algae. <laughs> uh, I've always been healthy, but since my journey down the algae, as an algae angel, as you say, um, I have consumed more and more of it and I seem to be getting more and more benefits. I seem to be getting younger and younger. I feel like the actual Benjamin Button in the real, the real, in the flesh. But um, I think it's uh, the COVID pushed our buttons to find answers to questions that we weren't getting the answers to. Uh, there's been a resurgence or a, a explosion in regenerative medicine, biohacking, whatever you want to call it, any kind of alternative, quote, alternative care, which ironically is really the original care, whether it was um, acupuncture or meditation or um, eating, you know, close to the earth. The irony is simplicity truly gives you the best health, whether it's sleep, walking outside, love, uh, simplicity, less stress, it, it works. And, and you can't get anything more simple than algae. It's the mo it was the original food 3.8 billion years ago. It's ancestral, it's paleo, it's keto, it's vegan. <laughs> it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I thought, I just noticed recently, as I said, spir spirulina was the first life on earth. It's a cyanobacteria. It's not even a plant. But I thought, isn't it interesting that spirulina, which was the first life on earth, is it, I think it's very spiritual. Yeah. Spiritual spirulina. Yeah. It's the very, what's called high vibrational food. Uh, you can do these things called Kirlin photography, which will, uh, you photograph different things, whether it's their plants or pieces of furniture, and they'll show you the energy that's from them. And algae is the highest en energy food that you can get. And um, I think it's because it was the original gift to us from God, from the universe, from mother nature, because it's it was the first, not just the first plant, the first life, you can only be the first life once. <laughs> <It's> still here. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, and that's when people come to me as a medical intuitive and energy healing. I'm I'm like a human MRI, Catherine. Right. I can I anybody if you were on Mars, I could scan you and I can see broken bones, cancer, viral infections, bacterial infections, whatever. And then I watch energetic healings happen in my mind's eye. To, and then describe it to my client or, or the caller onto my show. And people come to me, I think it helps Im expand their spirituality because they've seen so many doctors and gotten so many different diagnoses and treatment plans, and they still have the same symptoms. And so they're saying, okay, I don't know what else to do. And so in a lot of instances, they come to me and it's something that's not even related to what the doctors have told them. They've got yeah. severe mold exposure or they've got something else going on that isn't even, you know, it's not an autoimmune disease. You got mold exposure. Yeah. And so yeah. there's that. When somebody has one of those diagnoses, and I always say that it's spirit that works through me and with me to help facilitate healing. And that's what's happening with you too. It's spirit working through you and with you to help people heal themselves, which is right. nobody heals anybody else. We all heal ourselves. When right. you have somebody like your sister who gets a devastating diagnosis like that, and they start adding the, you know, the algae to their diet and they clean up their diet, I believe everything's healable 
Have you seen that in your work as well? Oh, totally. We get emails every day from people whose Alzheimer's went into remission, cancer went into remission. And I don't know if you'll indulge me. Um, I'd like to help people understand that it's not that there's a real scientific thing going on here. The problem is nobody's ever told us how our bodies work. We know how our cell phone works. We know how our car works, but we don't know how our bodies work. And so, and when you don't understand something, you fear it. And very often fear, they've shown it, not very often, but fear they've shown shuts down your, your, your ability of your brain to take in new information. So you're like deer in the headlights. And so then you fall back to maybe the traditional medications or surgeries, but there are, are other ways to help you, but you have to be open to it. And if you understand something, then you're not going to be as afraid of it. And so I like to show people how, what's happening, why they're getting sick. It all comes down to your mitochondria, which are these little things in your cells that generate your cellular energy and why algae helps correct the situation. So if you're ready for a little bit of a science lesson, I can. Yeah. That was my next question. Talk to us about that and talk to us about, I I do have a question before you get into all of that. For people, and I'm one of them, who are highly allergic to mold, and it's 30% of the population from what I've found. I mean, I can walk in a room and I can tell you in a nanosecond, I'm not staying here because there's a mold problem here. My husband's oblivious, saying, I don't smell anything. I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. Great. Enjoy yourself, honey. I'll meet you in the car. Yeah. So algae and mold are not kissing cousins. They're not oh, going to affect no. somebody no, who's... No, mold is negative. Algae is... is mold uh, creates microtoxins right. that are toxins in your body that interfere with your cellular communication, your ability to your mitochondria to function. It's just very damaging to everything. Algae is like the ambulance or the fire, the fire uh, truck that comes out to save you. It couldn't be more polar opposite okay. to, from one okay. another. So great. Um, okay, so give us give us a biology lesson okay. in algae, all right, or in how the body works. Yeah. Um, and we call the company's called Energy Bits, and we have two types of algae. One is called spirulina, and one is called chlorella. Spirulina is very energizing and nourishing. And so I'm gonna start the lesson by explaining to you, when I say it's energizing, it's at the cellular level. This is different than a stimulant. A stimulant is like caffeine, chemicals, or sugar. And what the stimulants do, they speed up the movement of, of cellular commu- cells and the, move- the communication from your brain to your body. So that's why you get perked up, uh, but they, they spike and then they crash. And so it's not good for you. <laughs> algae doesn't do that. It is not a stimulant. What it does is it generates cellular energy at the cellular level. And that cellular energy is created by what's called your mitochondria. They are in all of your cells in your entire body. And think of cellular energy, to make the money analogy again, like money. When you have more money, you can do more things and you have more choices. When you have cellular, more cellular energy, you can do more things and you have more choices. The problem is, as you get older, your mitochondria, which are responsible for generating that cellular energy, they die, they mutate. And so in, as you get older, you have less and less cellular energy to do the same things that need to be done, which is helping you think, helping you walk, helping you talk, your heartbeat, your immune system, your lymphatic system. Everything is propelled by cellular energy. And when you don't have enough cellular energy, nothing works. Think of it this way. We just came off of Thanksgiving. You know, if, if you had a, th- a pie, a nice, beautiful pie, and you had a thousand people that you had to feed, nobody would get very much pie, right? Everybody would be upset with you, angry with you, maybe never come back. But when you have, let's say, a thousand pies for a thousand people, Now everybody's happy. Everybody gets what they want. 
cellular energy is the same way. When you don't have enough cellular energy, your brain isn't happy with you because it's not getting what it needs. Your heart isn't happy with you because it's not getting what it needs. Your lymphatic system isn't getting what it needs. Nothing is getting what it needs. So everything kind of goes at half mast. And then as your mitochondria continue to get damaged and continue to die, you have less and less cellular energy left. So when you get hit with maybe a flu or a cold or COVID or something, you can't fight it off because you're at such an exposed level because you don't have enough cellular energy. Now you're going to find out algae, particularly spirulina algae, restores the mitochondria, builds it back, protects it so it doesn't die in the first place, and gives you back all that cellular energy that you need to ensure to protect what you have and re or regain what you've lost. And it does it strictly through nutrients, through nutrients found in, in them. Some of them aren't in any other food and many of them aren't even in any other algae because of the uh, other companies use high heat to dry them. But here's your science lesson. So remember, mitochondria generate all the cellular energy for absolutely every single thing that you do. And here's your cell and inside your cell is your nucleus and swimming around inside the cell are these little things that peanut shape called mitochondria. Now, just to let you know how important these things are, there are 2 million mitochondria per cell in your brain. 2 million. Wow. That's why every brain disease is actually a mitochondria disease. The next highest concentration you'll be interested to know is in women's eggs. There's mm. 700,000 mitochondria per cell in every single egg. After that, it's your heart. There's about 7,000 mitochondria per cell in your heart. After that's your muscles, which are 5,000. And then it gets down to like hundreds in your fat cells. But the highest mitochondria are where your greatest energy needs are. Your brain, your heart, takes a lot of energy to make another human being. So here you have your cell and your little mitochondria. And inside the mitochondria is where that energy, that cellular energy, which is called ATP, that's where it's made, is right inside there. But what people don't tell you is a byproduct of ATP are free radicals. And here's the other thing nobody ever tells you. Your mitochondria have their own DNA. Yes, you have your 22,000 DNA and they're all over here in the, in the cell, nowhere near where the ATP is produced. Your mitochondria have their own DNA. There's only 37 of them. And they are inside the mitochondria exactly where the ATP and the free radicals are being produced. What's wrong with free radicals? They're damaging. Think of free radicals as sparks that would fly off from a fire. So if you've ever sat close to a bonfire or a fireplace and sparks would fly, you could you maybe get burned, right? Well, that's what's happening to your mitochondria DNA because they are right beside where the free radicals are and they get burned. A free radical, by the way, is a molecule with an unpaired electron. So nature loves balance. And so if there's an unpaired electron, that molecule will steal another electron from a neighboring molecule to balance it out. And after that, now it's unbalanced. So it will steal another one from the next one and on and on it goes. It's like going to, you know, you were a kid at school and someone stole your lunch. And so maybe you would go someone and steal someone else's lunch. And so it just causes great havoc. So free radicals are very damaging to molecules. Uh, so the fact that there's so many free radicals inside the mitochondria where your mitochondria DNA are, are located causes all this mitochondria damage. And your mitochondria DNA control everything in your body. They control your regular DNA. They control the communication in your cells. So when they die and mutate as they do with such great frequency, you have fewer mitochondria to generate cellular energy and the and you have less cellular energy period because they're not working as well and that is what's causing so much damage uh to you and your health as you get older one of the might the um antioxidants that naturally protect you from this kind of damage is a is an antioxidant that your body makes from for you from the moment you're born it's called superoxide dismutase also known as sod I know it's kind of a long word. Here's the thing about superoxide dismutase. It's proven to stop free radical damage. There are 25,000 documents in the NIH library proving that it stops heart disease, inflammation, Alzheimer's, 
And, and so what does SOD do? It turns those free radicals into harmless water. Ta-da! So your mitochondria are protected. It's like having the firemen in there to put out the fire. Remember I talked about the sparks from a fire? Free radicals are just like sparks. Now you got superoxidismutase coming in to stop all that, that damage of your mitochondria. The problem is your body stops making this superoxidismutase after the age of 30. So by the time you're 40, you have virtually, or 50, you have virtually no superoxidismutase you have from the moment you're born. And then 30, 40, 50, and certainly by 60, you are no longer protected. Your mitochondria no longer have superoxidismutase to stop all that free radical damage. And here's the problem. You can't get superoxidismutase from any other food, period, except algae, <laughs> spirulina wow. in particular. Chlorella has almost as much, but spirulina has the highest superoxidismutase in the world. And um, we've there's clinical trials. We've done our own clinical trials because it gets into the bloodstream so quickly, it gets to the mitochondria to stop this free radical damage because it's a bacteria. Spirulina is a bacteria. It doesn't even have a cellulose wall for your body to break down to get access to all the nutrients, including the superoxidismutase. So the so the the bacteria thing, though, let's let's address that for a second because most people, when they hear bacteria, they think bad, whereas there's a bazillion different kinds of bacteria in our guts. Yes. yes. And there's well, so it, give us a little bit of a difference between what's a beneficial bacteria and what's a harmful bacteria. Well, and for years I didn't even mention the bacteria, but fortunately people know enough now about their gut. <clears throat> and there's health, healthy bacteria and unhealthy bacteria. This is definitely a healthy bacteria. A bacteria does not have a cellulose wall and it does not have a nucleus. Those are the main distinguishers of a bacteria. Chlorella, which is the other algae we sell, we call it spirulina, does belong to the plant kingdom, does have a plant a hard cell wall and does have a nucleus, but spirulina does not. And again, it, it's called a cyanobacteria because it was the, and it was the first life on earth. And uh, this is where all life came from, from a cyanobacteria like spirulina. Everything on earth came from, from uh, cyanobacteria. And I was going to show this later, but I might as well show it to you now. Um, well, I'll, 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 so, so maybe I'll wait a minute. Because I do want to assure you that this concept of a bacteria uh, it should be good news because it's, it's one of the healthy bacteria. Your gut is full yeah, of healthy bacteria full. if you do not eat... Uh, um, sugar and processed foods. And when you do eat sugar and processed foods, that stimulates the growth of the unhealthy bacteria. And so the healthy guys don't have a chance. That's why you've got to often do a detox, a cleanse, you have to change your diet. Chlorella is really great for that because it's, it has fiber, it has all the nutrients that your, your immune system needs. But um, I mentioned the fact that this is a bacteria because of the speed by which it will be absorbed by your body because there's no cellulose wall for your body to break down to get access to the nutrients like there there would be in plants. That's the main I, reason I want you to understand When I'm that. working with cancer patients especially, I watch DNA healings. I watch the nucleic acids in the strands of DNA get resequenced. And I watch them come out of a chromosome. And I'm wondering, and I would love your input on this, Catherine. Do you think what I'm watching is is the resequencing of the mitochondrial DNA or just the regular DNA or both? Because in cancer patients, normally I'll see seven strands. And it's like I'm watching somebody playing Scrabble in warp speed. I'm watching the AC, you know, ATCGs get rearranged. And then when the strand is is back to a normal recipe, it snaps back in. Obviously, this is an analogy for the energy healing that's happening. But I'm hearing you talk about that mitochondria has its own DNA. And I'm wondering, I'm getting that it, that it very possibly could be the mitochondrial DNA that I'm watching, because that seems to be the root it, of it, everything. It, it could be, but I honestly don't know. But here's another interesting thing is that all of your mitochondria DNA come from women, from all from the eggs. Your regular DNA, half is from the sperm, half is from the egg. Mitochondria is 100% from the women's eggs. I, I, and, I, and, and the ironic thing is I'm telling people mitochondria is where the action is. 
everything that yeah. has to do with your health, good or bad, is determined by your mitochondria. And they work so deep into the cell for all this time, you know, without any thanks, without anyone knowing about them, just like women, right? We're always working behind the scenes, working hard, trying to make things work. And here, here are the mitochondria. They're all from, from the women. So um, I thought that was pretty funny. But since you've brought up cancer a couple of times, I do want to um, show you something else that's very powerful. Again, this is why I believe algae, particularly spirulina, is very spiritual. Um, so I, I may, have, may not have mentioned it, but spirulina is known as a blue-green algae because it has two pigments in it. It has a blue pigment, uh, which is called phycocyanin, which you've never probably heard of before. Um, so I'm going to even spell it for you so that you can go online. Um, it's P-H-Y-C-O-C-Y. A N I N. That's that's how you spell it. Phycocyanin. We'll, we'll have it in the in the notes. In the notes. Yeah. Now chlorella is a green algae because it only has one pigment, chlorophyll. Spirulina has both the blue one called phycocyanin and the green one called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is what makes plants green. But you've probably never heard of phycocyanin. Well, let me tell you something pretty powerful about phycocyanin. This is why, again, I think Mother Nature, God, Spirit, it created algae for us. I'm going to show you a picture because well, I'll give you the headline first. Phycocyanin, the blue pigment in spirulina, is proven to kill cancer cells. I'm going to show you how that works. First of all, here's a, a, um, a scientific paper. They put they dyed cancer cells purple in a petri dish, and then they put phycocyanin in the petri dish. And this is a picture of 24 hours later. The, the cancer cells went from that to that, virtually gone. Wow, pretty pretty amazing, right? And so what's happening is the, um, in, I didn't get into the in deep, deep science geeky, but I'm going to do it now. When I talked about the <laughs> mitochondria, um, all that activity occurs in the inner, inner membrane. Mitochondria are the only cells in your body that have two membranes. All of your other cells have what's called a lipid membrane, which is a fancy way of saying fat membrane. But your mitochondria have a second inner membrane. And I'm going to tell you where that came from in a minute. But in the membrane, this is where the actual um, ATP, cellular energy, is created. There's these little molecules embedded in the membrane. <clears throat> and it's sort of like a relay race. You know, if you've ever watched a relay race and someone has a baton, they pass it to the next runner and they go a distance, they pass it to the next runner, and then hopefully they cross the finish line. Well, the same thing sort of happens in the production of your cellular energy, except instead of a baton being passed along, there's electrons. And instead of a person, it's these molecules that are embedded in the, in the uh, membrane. Why is this important? Because there's this little helper molecule, it's called cytochrome C. And it's a uh, fat-based, um, sorry, it's a water-based molecule. And in cancer cells, or what's called senescent cells, which are basically zombie cells, they, they're, they're basically dead, but they won't go away and they're inflammatory and you don't want them. In, in either a cancer cell or a zombie cell, <clears throat> that blue pigment <clears throat> kicks, out <the> cyto <clears throat> kicks out the cytochrome C molecule that goes and targets the cancer cell and kills it. <clears throat> Ta-da! Pretty amazing, right? Wow. In a healthy cell, that little helper molecule called cytochrome C, in a healthy, mo healthy molecule, the blue pigment speeds it up. It's like turns it into like a Tesla. And it pushes the electrons along even faster. So boom, you get more, you get more energy, get more cellular energy. Cellular energy is what helps you breathe, think, heal, does everything. And that's why one of the many reasons we call the spirulina energy bits, because it's helping you with cellular energy. And this is all documented in science, but it's pretty geeky, uh, but it, it's there. So these kinds of things are all part of algae we don't put it in it. This is what Mother Nature gave to us almost 4 billion years ago. But no one has done the deep dive into the rabbit hole like I have to try to figure out. I needed to find out why this was working so well. Why were people's cancers going into remission? Why was ours working so much better than somebody else's? Oh, and here's the other thing. That blue pigment that proven to kill cancer cells because of this little thing here. Well, it's damaged, deactivated, in fact by high heat. And so one of the things that I've always done when I started the company, I wanted everything to be as high quality 
so we could help people. So we grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water so there's no toxins. We've never used high heat so that all the nutrients in our algae are not scrambled or deactivated, including that blue pigment called phycocyanin, which um, has been proven to kill cancer cells. And you can Google phycocyanin and cancer treatments and you'll see the articles that I'm referencing. The only other algae I can recommend is frozen spirulina for the same reasons. It's not been exposed to high heat. So all the superoxydismutase, all the phycocyanin is preserved because it has not been exposed to high heat. Can it facilitate bone growth? Can algae facilitate bone growth? Oh, absolutely. Because everything that grows, because we have over 30 trillion cells in our body and every day 30 trillion die <clears throat> and every day 30 trillion more grow. Uh, there's a great expression that you never, an uh, Asian expression, you never step in the same river twice because a river is constantly flowing. It's constantly changing. So are our bodies. So if you give your body what it needs to regenerate with nutrients that it actually needs, you will have healthier growth of those cells, whether it's bone health, brain health, um, your gut health, heart health. It's crazy. It's And, and I've even been reading that it helps release stem cells as well. Uh, wow. I'm still learning more about that part. So, but it yeah. absolutely stimulates growth in everything. Everything, everything, everything comes down to your mitochondria. So you, you want to do everything you can to preserve those mitochondria. And, and as I mentioned, as they get damaged, they don't work as well. They don't generate as much energy. And here's another example why. Remember I showed you that picture of all the little molecules, like a relay race jammed together, passing the electrons. So this is what a healthy one looks like. See how close they are so they could pass the electrons easily? Right. Well, when your mitochondria get damaged, it expands and there's more space between the, the little uh, molecules. So they can't pass the electrons as easily. So what happened, two things happen. You now have less electrons being shared. So you have less ATP. So you have less cellular energy being produced. And second, they, more electrons leak out to create more and more free radicals. This is why as you get older and as you get sicker, you have less and less energy to heal because you have less and less of the cellular energy that's required to do that. So you have a detox trick that you suggest. What is that? Tell us about that. Well, it's not a trick. It's just that the algae do different things. Spirulina is very nourishing. It gives you energy at the cellular level, mitochondrial level for your brain, um, and is very satisfying for your hunger. So it's very much an energizing, nourishing algae. Chlorella is a wellness and detoxing algae. It will not give you energy. It will not um, satisfy your hunger. Uh, and the reason it's a detoxing algae is twofold. It, well, three actually, has the highest chlorophyll in the world. Chlorophyll is very cleansing. <clears throat> Number two, it has a hard cell wall that attaches to heavy metals, toxins, doesn't matter, spores from mold, lime, alcohol, lactic acid, lead, mercury, pulls them all out. And three, it has the highest glutathione in the world. Those three things make chlorella algae, um, and we call ours recovery bits, the, uh, a detoxing algae. It's been used for probably 50 years for that reason. It's for a gut health detoxing algae, whereas spirulina is a nourishing, energizing algae. Uh, and also because there's so many mitochondria in your brain, think of spirulina as brain food and chlorella as gut food because it works in your gut, works in your immune system and pulls out toxins. So do you take them together or do you do just one or the other? What do you recommend on that? Well, you, you could easily, uh, well, we even have a brand called Vitality Bits, which is a blend of the two. We definitely recommend spirulina in the morning. You can take either one of them any time of day, as often as you want, as much as you want, because it's food, but most people are hungry um, and want energy in the morning. And so we suggest 10 of the spirulina tablets in the morning, more if you like. If you're ketogenic, that's great. It does not interfere with your fast because there's zero carbs, but definitely take it in the morning. You could have 30 for lunch for 30 calories. You won't be hungry for five hours. Chlorella, Why is that? A, Why is me? that? Why are you not hungry when you take the spirulina? Because it has the highest protein in the world, is 64% protein. That's three times the amount of protein as steak. 
uh, it's loaded with essential fatty acids like omega-3 and other essential fatty acids, which are very nourishing, <clears throat> satisfy your health or satisfy your hunger. Um, it has, it has um, B, loaded with B vitamins, which convert the protein, which are all in amino acids into uh, cellular energy for your mitochondria. So it's, it's a great snack for them. So it's, it gives your, and it has 40 vitamins and minerals. So it gives your body everything that it needs. Um, but you don't get the a bloat. It's not, a, it doesn't take any time. You just swallow them or chew them if you want. It's, it, it, it works. It just, it just does. And if you don't, if 30 don't, doesn't satisfy your hunger for hours, take more. Maybe you're a bigger build or you're very active, uh, or you could take less. Um, it really depends on what you're doing, your state of your health. If you have a health condition, we definitely uh, suggest you double or triple the amount that you're taking. But spirulina in the morning is very, people love this. Uh, I use this, I've used it for 13 years, but for intermittent fasting, I, that's all I eat till about two o'clock. Well, I, I actually have chlorella too, just because I really like the taste of it. Chlorella, we recommend you take before bed, uh, any time of day, but definitely before bed, because when you sleep, your body goes through a detox and repair cycle. So if you have chlorella in there, it's going to be while you're sleeping and it has the highest tryptophan in the world, it actually helps you sleep, um, get, uh, get you into the deep sleep. It will um, pull out toxins while you're sleeping. This is when all your repair is happening. Uh, you, your brain will shrink and will help get rid of the toxins like aluminums in your brain. So, so you, and, and uh, um, the high chlorophyll, stimulates peristalsis, which is a bowel movement. Uh, you wanna get rid of the junk in your trunk in the morning so you have a happy, happy trip to the bathroom. So you can take it any, any time of day, but definitely before bed. So if you wanted wellness benefits, 10 tablets a day would be, or before bed would be enough. For detox, you need closer to 30 um, because it won't have enough to pull out the toxins. Now, the good news is chlorella actually tastes pretty good. Uh, I use put sea salt on it or I eat it with pistachio nuts. It's delicious or macadamia nuts. Spirulina, I will admit, most people do not like the flavor of it. So most people swallow it. But chlorella, um, every time I give this to people and I mix it with pistachio nuts, they love it. Absolutely love it. So now you're having a very healing snack before bed. Okay. All right. A couple more questions as we're winding down here. You collaborate with NASA scientists who take algae while in space and you research the effect of it well, on well, their that's bodies. That's quite true. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, we, we have not done direct research with NASA. We have some scientists who we work with who have worked with science, NASA, and they've taken our algae on some, uh, well, they took it on a neat, what's called a Nemo mission, which is a submarine. Uh, and they did blood analysis while they were in the submarine for seven days. And the analysis showed that the inflammation was the lowest, the oxygenation was the highest. So, but that, um, uh, that, that's Dr. Dominique D'Agostino, and he's based at the University of Southern California in Tampa. And he's a wonderful, uh, professor, PhD, scientific researcher, and he does work with NASA, but, and he took our algae with him on those missions, but I don't want to take any credit for the work that he did on his own initiative. Okay, great. You're very involved with philanthropic causes. So tell us about the organizations with which you work and why you chose them. Well, um, Two things, actually. Um, well, there's many more we'd love to be involved with, but breast cancer awareness, of course. So um, uh, helping fund any kind of breast cancer research. We focus on the research. Um, and the other one is um, tree, you know, plant a tree. We're, you know, we live on a, in a world that, um, you know, we're all part of the world and, and we need plants and uh, trees are I, I'm, you know, maybe it's part of my Canadian thing. I'm a tree hugger. Um, I love trees. I've always loved trees. So just bringing more trees to the world is, is a great thing. So those are, uh, so one is for the environment and one is for, for, you know, for our health ourselves. But uh, as we get bigger, there's many more groups that we'd like to support. Um, you know, children's nutrition would be another big one for me for sure. Um, but there's, there's endless great causes. So, my goal is to build the company so we can support other really great organizations who are doing great things. Okay. Last question. Why do you think we incarnate? 
to learn the lesson uh, that we didn't learn last time, to to learn the lesson to how to bring joy to ourselves and to the world, to to allow the gift that we were given to us to shine. Um, so many of us, including myself, were afraid of our own gifts. And um, uh, there's nothing more powerful, more rewarding, more joyful than honoring your own gift and sharing it. And I think if we don't do that on this life, we come back until we learn that lesson. Well, and as the algae angel, we know why you incarnated, or at least a big piece of it. To... I think this could be my last trip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say the Blues Brothers, you're on a mission from God. I think you're, I think you're part of the angelic sisters or something to, <laughs> to uh, you know, to educate everybody. All right. We're going to, we'll put a link so everybody can get to it. Uh, I have a link that will give them a discount. And yes, uh, in the, in the meantime, tell everybody how they can learn more about you and your work. Sure. Well, come and visit us at energybits.com, E-N-E-R-G-Y-B-I-T-S. Um, we have a, we write a full blog every month. So even if you don't want to buy anything, just come to the website and learn. But if you do want to buy something, we have a 20% discount code, Julie Ryan, all one word, and you get 20% off everything. And, um, there's no, no time limit. Don't panic. You can, uh, and if you aren't sure whether algae is for you, you can always go to Amazon and buy a single pouch for $6 and try it out. Make sure you're happy with the results and then come back to the website and uh, use your 20% discount code, Julie Ryan. Um, we're also active on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Energy Bits is the, our handle, but um, the website's the main, where the main action is for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's thank fun. you. <laughs> thank you on behalf of the world for all well, the amazing work that you're doing to, you know, to help people get well, to help educate us. We, a lot of this stuff, if we learned it in biology class, it was a long time ago and we've forgotten it. And I think we know a lot more now than we did way back in the day. So yeah. on, on behalf of the world, Catherine, thank you for mm -hmm. everything you're doing for humanity, really, which is why I wanted to have you on because I think well, you're extraordinary. You. I think the work you're doing is extraordinary as well. Well, so, so is what you're doing. It takes a lot of us to turn this big ship around, right? But I'm confident we can do it. So <laughs> I agree. So, okay, everybody, awesome that's community. you bet. That's it for this week. Send any let's love from Sweet Home, Alabama Mwah! and from Boston too, where Catherine is. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.